Hey guys, welcome back to Here's Rodder's Reviews. We're back into He-Man and the Masters of Universe once more. Uh, this episode, absolutely fantastic. It's called Evil Seed. And uh, basically, uh, I don't really want to destroy this one too badly for you. But I've said it a few times in the Transformers reviews. There's a few times where Optimus Prime and Megatron actually had a team up together to get out of a situation and save the day and that's exactly what happens in this episode of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe uh, there's a creature, a dude <laughs> a guy turns up, hooded figure and he's given out these seeds to different people on Eternia and uh, these seeds basically veins grow attack everything that just the whole planet is basically on the verge of being taken over by these vines and this guy, uh, this hooded figure turns out to be a character called Evil Seed who is planning on taking over Eternia with his plants and whatnot. And uh, Honestly at the beginning of the episode I thought this was going to be a very very weak one and uh, I was really really wrong I have to say I was very wrong in this episode. Throughout it, there's a good few action sequences in this episode of He-Man and Man-at-Arms and Battle Cat trying to save villagers from a bust dam and uh, in doing that they slow down Evil Seed's plans. He needs that dam destroyed to, you know, water the plants essentially to conquer Eternia. But uh, even at that there the weeds and the vines and whatnot are slowly taking over absolutely everything. They almost lose the palace at one point. The king and queen are kidnapped by these vines along with Tila. So the majority of the good guys before the end of the episode are taken out. Basically there's, there's this one central tree and that uh, evil seed has, you know, got all the heroes bound up and these vines hanging from the branches and of course He-Man thinks you know Skeletor is behind us but he finds out Skeletor is just as helpless at this point and where all the heroes have been taken by these vines also the villains on Skeletor's side are been taken as well so the, the sorceress gets He-Man to Castle Grayskull and I have to say for a cartoon character I have really got the hots for the sorceress. Uh, if she was a real woman, I would be like, mm, can I have a date with you? <laughs> ah, beautiful, beautiful. Cartoon character. Something wrong with that. Anyway, we're at Castle Grey Skull, and they try to think about it logically. You know, how are we going to defeat these vines? Of course, they need water to survive, but, you know, what else can we do here? And they discover that if they freeze, the vines will die. The vines can't live in extreme cold weather. And uh, the problem with that is, you know, they could use ice rays, ice ray guns to fight them off. But he man's like, you know, there's not enough ice rays on Eternia to even make a dent on these things. So they come up with a plan to uh, teleport he man to Ice Mountain. And he's, of course, the strongest man in the universe. And he's going to rip off a chunk of Ice Mountain and like throw it under the sky. And when it gets over the top of Castle Grayskull, they're going to combine their powers to destroy this chunk of mountain and make it snow. The only problem with that is uh, they need an insane amount of energy to do it. Uh, of course, above Castle Grayskull is the magical source of Eternia and uh, they're going to need to combine He-Man's powers with the Sorcerer's powers but they also need the third strongest person in Eternia to team up and use his powers as well so they need Skeletor to get involved in this but Skeletor is like you know what me do something good I'm not going to do that he's like you can all burn you know as far as he's concerned and uh, but it doesn't take long for him to change his mind because uh, the only person that he had defending him at that point was Trapjaw but his 
Ace Ray runs out and he also gets taken by the Vines as well. So Skeletor, last man standing on the villain side, uh, gets in contact with Grey Skull and, uh, you know, offers reluctantly to go and help them with their plan. But Skeletor, being Skeletor, uh, he doesn't want to get, go to Castle Greyskull and enter the doors of it unless he's there as its conqueror basically so when he does get there uh, he does turn on the, the sorceress once he teleports He-Man to the ice mountain uh, before she can get him teleported back Skeletor makes his move uh, but he gets, then he gets attacked by a vein and that gives the sorceress enough time to teleport He-Man back so on the top of Castle Greyskull they do try to shoot this chunk of ice mountain which that He-Man had thrown into the sky and it's going over the top of Castle Greyskull at this point to take one shot at it doesn't make a dent on it that's because Skeletor didn't shoot and they need him to actually shoot with them combine his power to blow this thing apart and make it snow so very very reluctantly you know it's it's an act of goodness on Skeletor's part and it really sticks in his throat that he has to do this sort of thing but if he doesn't Eternia is done for so they do they combine powers blast the thing out of the sky starts to snow and evil seed is defeated along with his plants they all die and uh, wither away and all the heroes and villains are released from his grip so this is a fantastic fantastic episode basically the PSA at the end of it is you know what uh, uh, teamwork will get you through anything and it can be hard at times to work as a part of a team but if you do uh, you'll get through it and maybe you'll learn something yourself and that's Tila that breaks the fourth wall and does this little PSA at the end of it I absolutely adore this series and that sorceress for a cartoon character guys I don't know I'm starting to feel bad about it but she is adorable <laughs> I don't know what else to say it's just like every time she's on screen I'm just like beautiful <laughs> beautiful <laughs>